very nice term. It's a lovely shot, but you know what you do is you, you scoop. There's nothing wrong with it, but if you had a loop, you'd get more power, and also you'd be able to have variety. You could play a drop shot without your poor knowing about it, you see. So look, your picture is this. You are actually, if you took my racket as an example, you are going as if you go underneath my racket. Right. What you want to do is go over my racket like this. Draw a little picture over my ah, racket like this. Like that. Right, touch my racket all the way through. That's it. Now I'll do with the ball, see what it looks like. And there you have the picture, you see. Like that. Now you've got the power of the stroke, and you can any time play a drop shot too. The right is your game, and more power. Well, great, thanks. I like that. Wonderful. All right, Tim, that's a nice looking stroke there. The only thing is your left hand, you know, is out of tune with your body. Why don't you do this? Take your left hand, uh, as you rack it back, take your left hand and point, point towards the ball. And then as you follow through, as you hit the ball, touch your racket with both hands and then extend your arm. Okay. That'll give you a much more balanced picture in the stroke. Just try that. When the ball comes, now point with your left hand. What a difference. You see your whole yeah. body looks like much more compact picture. This will give you much more control over the stroke. That's a good one. I like that. Good one. Excellent. Sir. All right. Again, let me see. It's a lovely shot, Tim. The only thing is you're a little bit late your preparation. What you want to do is meet the ball more in front. Now, you've acquired a bad habit. Now, I'm going to show you how to correct it. Okay. You, I'm going to obligate you to be early. Okay. Here's a trick. You can't, you, you can't mess up even if you try to. Are you okay. ready? Yep. Go hit that ball. Aha, uh -huh. you see where the ball is now? It's in yeah. front of you now. Yeah, and that is the point of contact. And now stroke the ball. Okay. Yes, sir. And that's the point of contact. Okay. Thanks. Very easy to learn. That's Excellent. a good one. Thanks. Excellent. Good. And again. That's very nice, Tim. You've got a lot of power, but it's so wristy, you see, you lose control of it. Rather keep your wrist a little bit firmer for more control. Here's a trick. Hold your racket halfway, right. and I'm going to stick my tennis ball in there. See, now it's impossible to use your wrist because right. you can't move it. Okay, now just gently try and hit the ball. Try and feel what it feels like without using your wrist. Perfect. Do you see how much firmness? Yeah. Now, take the ball out and keep the same shot. Imagine you're still in there, hit the same stroke again. That, now, hold your racket full length, and now stroke the ball. Do you see the difference in the stroke? Oh, I love it. Much Great. more control. Beautiful. Great. Thanks, Dennis. Very well done. All right, Tim, one more time. That's beautiful, Tim. Of course, you could become a butcher with that stroke, you see. It's one of the best slices I know. Look, a slice is a wonderful shot to have. But I'd like you to add to your game a topspin. And here's a little prop. An easy way to do it. You see, if I were to take this chair and I said to you, Tim, you have to swing your racket back and you have to go down to the chair down here. Put on the chair. Now hold your racket on the chair and now try and play the ball from there. Now swing at the ball. You see, right away it becomes a topspin. Okay, racket back. Put it on the chair and I'll play. Okay, now I'll take the chair away. Look, and now do your normal loop, do your normal back swing and then just get, now down to the middle, chair, chair, chair. That's it. And again, one more time. And now use a chair down here, get it down below the chair, and that's how easy to get a topspin. Very well done, Tim. Like Thanks Perfect. Good well done, well done. Very nice, Tim. One more time. It's very good. The only thing is you're so stiff-legged. Look, always try to have a bit more of a knee bend. I'll show you a trick how to do it. Just put your racket against your knee like this. See, now, now, now bend forward till your racket clears your toe. See that? Now, see how your knee is bent? Uh -huh. Okay. Now, next time, hit the ball and see what, what your knee looks like. Okay. All right. Now, okay, measure it. Let's see. All right. You see, it's still too stiff. Now, lean forward. Lean to, that's it. Okay. Now, this time, hit the ball and measure and it should be. Now, bend so you could actually clear. The racket must clear. Bend. Lean forward. Lean forward. Now, Not touch. Now. Right. Not okay. Better. So, get your body weight more forward too. One more. One more. And lean forward. Now lean forward this time. Yes, yes, yes. Measure. And that's the key, you see. Right away, it's the best reminder how to bend your knees. 
instead of saying, bend your knees, you say, hey, it feels much yeah. so, I'm in good shape. It feels a lot better. Sure, because you're much more relaxed then, okay? Great. Well Thanks, done. Dennis. Really good. Good. Seven. That's all right. One more time. Let me see. See, you're guiding the ball. What happens to me is you kind of break your wrist here, you mm -hmm. see. Makes a lump in the thing. I'm going to give you the simplest clue you ever. You don't have to think about keeping your wrist firm. You can keep your wrist the same as before. Take your knuckles, and I'll see if you can do this. Just put your knuckles to your, to your left ear. See that? Now, put, if you put, this is the way you're eating the ball. You're eating the ball this way right. instead of letting the knuckles turn towards your ear. Now, do a, do a, um, a shadow swing. Just yeah. swing one without the ball. Knuckles, touch your ear, let me see. That's it. Now with a live ball. Knuckles to your ear. And touch knuckles to your ear. Yes, and again, one more. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Knuckles to your ear, right there. That's it. See, so with your knuckles to your ear, then you have to get the topspin. And that cures the problem right away. All right, thanks, Dennis. Well done, sir. Okay, Tim, back to the few returns of sir. Let me see. Come on, Dennis, you've got to get, you got to get to the end for you to practice returning serve. Yeah, but if you complain, it makes the guy nervous. Actually, it's very good for you when the guy misses the ball. Because look what happens is, when the ball goes in the net, you can first of all can see if you're ready. When, when the guy serves in the net, your racket ought to be here, otherwise you weren't ready. And then if it's in the net, you can play a shadow stroke, you can visualize the stroke, you see. Whether it's a forehand or a backhand. Now, just for fun, serve one in the net to his forehand, you visualize it. And I'll play a four and complete the stroke. Now serve one to his back and in the net. All right, now you don't know if it's going to come over or not. If it comes over, what are you going to do? You, and it comes over and, and there you are. You see, all the time was valuable then. Instead of the guy getting mad at you or you getting mad at him because he can't be one to, you both get the benefit out of the thing. And in the end, your stroke is that much better. Return of serve, very important to practice. That's a great idea. Thanks, Dennis. Fine, Tim, one more time. You see, that's your power drive. See, that's your power drive, but your elbow is, is very high. There's nothing wrong with that, but if a ball comes more quickly, you're not in time. So what I would prefer is if you would tuck it in a little bit more. Y let me show you an easy way to remember that. Okay. Always remember little props like this. Tuck, stick it right in your elbow over there. Now, when you take your racket back, it shouldn't fall out. It shouldn't drop out, you see. Let me see, so. Oh, ah, uh, wait. It fell out, you see, that's your old habit. <laughs> so, yeah. tuck it in there, tuck it in there, and only on the follow-through may it drop out, okay? So, okay. keep it in there until you do the follow-through. Keep it in there, keep it in, and now it can drop out. Okay, now, just do an imaginary one. Just imagine it's right in your elbow, it's right in your side, and now do it. Perfect, perfect, one more time. And his elbow is right in your side, and now the, much more compact, you see. So, when the ball comes quickly, then you use a compact one, and with an easy ball, then you can make a more elaborate swing. Very okay. well done. Thanks, Dennis. Good idea. Excellent. Okay, that was... Dennis, how do I handle those high ones? I'm kind of awkward. Well, the problem is, Tim, it's out of your strike zone. Up here, it's awkward to get and difficult to get power. This is where you'd like to meet the ball, you see. You can get there if you adjust your feet back and forth. High ball, go back. Or you can close in on the ball, one or the other. Here's a way to find the, the strike zone. Just hold your hands down here like this. That's your waist height. Now, you practice moving your feet around a lot and see if you can hit your ball right in your hands over here. Nah, you cheated me. You see, you got the ball up here. You've got to adjust more and more to meet the ball right down there. Try again. Wait for Move your feet. Move. That's where it should be. Okay. Now, that's where, you, no matter where the ball is, you meet the ball right there. Okay. Now, you take your racket and the same thing happens. A high bouncing ball doesn't matter. You adjust accordingly. Move your feet. Up around, up around. Move your feet. Move it. And now that's your strike zone. And our short ball over there, same thing. Adjust, 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 adjust. There you have it. This is exactly how you would do it, you see. When you move around, you find more balls in ideal position than if you stand there and make adaptations. Great idea. Thanks, Dennis. Tim, you did the ball very well. Been, been watching the players at the family circle, huh? All right, now the only thing is this, you know. 
when the, the world-class players use this open stance technique, they use a lot of shoulder turn. What you do is you tend to face net and just move your arm. Here's a trick. If I put the racket and board, two rackets together like this for you. Now look what you were doing. Take your racket back. See, you're, you would separate the two like yeah. this, you see. Yeah. Now what I want you to do is this time, as you're ready for the ball, take both back together like this. Ah. You see, now drop it out of the way and now hit the ball. Here comes the ball, now hit it. Now move your feet and hit the ball. Okay. And now again, put two together. Okay. And turn with both together. And now stroke the ball. And now just imagine you got it there. Imagine you got a racket in your hand and now turn with both of them. And now turn and then whack it. You see, better, beautiful. Better, now, yeah. see, that gives you that torque because even if you don't step in with your left foot, you'll still rotate your shoulders a bit more. Great. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks. Mighty powerful forehand you got there, Tim. A great shot again. All right. You see, those are, are wonderfully powerful shots, but look, you, you make some and you miss some. Uh, <laughs> look, I, I want you, first of all, you must have a steady game first. You must make your game more controlled, and as you have control of it, then increase the speed of the shot. Let me inhibit your swing a bit. Here's a, a perfect way to do it. Watch what we do here. Here's the fence. Now, I want you to put your back against the fence over here. Okay. All right. A brand new racket too, you see. Right. And, and here is a, another post here. And you want to break that against this post. So swing just from here and you can rotate your hips if you like and finish here. Just, okay. just make, so think of a clock. Six o'clock to 12 o'clock, okay? Or 12 o'clock to six o'clock. 12 to six. Okay. Now come over here. And now imagine the, the, the fence, the, this white line is now the fence, okay? Stand on side. Come a bit closer if you like. Okay, now. Swing from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Go. Okay, try. And swing from 12 to 6. Perfect. And again, 12 to 6. And again, 12 to 6. Very good. You see, you've lost some speed, but every ball went exactly where you aimed it. So practice first, and once you get the consistency, then I'll help you to get more acceleration on the stroke. Okay, thanks, Dennis. Very good. Good shot. Good shot. Yeah, it was okay, Dennis, but I find I hit every ball cross court. I'd like to move it around. What is, you mean to say the ball won't go down the line? Well, <laughs> let me show you. You can hit, stand on the on the corner over there, please. Let me show you this. You can send the ball anywhere you like. Now, I'm, the ball comes from the other side. I want you to to aim the ball towards me. Look, I'm standing right over here. Aim the ball towards me. I thought you could only hit the cross court. Okay, let, now now show me this one. Or I'll stand over here. Now send the ball to me. Okay. Right, Diego. Send the ball to me. Right. Now the ball comes in the front, and I'll send the ball straight back in, in the line it just came from. And, Tim, you can send the ball anywhere you want. You know, the trick is simply, when you exaggerate, it's so obvious that you can make your own directional control. Okay. Great, Dennis. Thanks. Very good. But you, you look, you, you've got your racket stuck up in the sky like this to try and hit the ball. Aren't you Aren't supposed to do that? I thought you were supposed to keep the racket above the wrist. See, that's a misconception. We, we'd say that to people because, look, this is the, the normal angle. If you look at my arm, you'll see the angle created here. This, this is the, where I feel comfortable now. When the ball comes and it's, it's lower, look what I would do. I should keep the same angle. But what people do, if a low ball comes, look what they tend to do. They go like this. Now, do you see, the angle has changed. So we say, say to people, Keep your racket above your wrist. We don't really mean that. If that were true, if a really low ball came, you'd have to dig a hole in the ground to do that. No. What we intend to say is this, is the angle must remain the same. So when the ball is low, look what I do. I lower my arm, but the angle was the same. So I bend my knees, lower my arm, but you would never try to do that. Okay. okay. Great, Dennis. Thanks a lot. Got it, got it. No. All right. Dennis, how come I can, I can handle those high ones, no problem, but the low ones give me a little trouble? It's because of your grip. You see, different grips for different heights. If the ball is up here, can you see how natural your grip is? Your grip, you hold a kind of a semi-western. This is perfect up top here. But now, the grip you have, when the ball is low, look, the racket is tends to be closed down here. So for low shots, 
this grip is awkward. For high shots, ideal. Many players do this. They have two different grips. So if the ball comes low, look how I would hold the ball on a low shot. I would shift to a continental grip. I'd use this grip. Now look, the ball is low. Now look, this is no trouble for me now. But now look, when a high ball comes, look what I look like with this grip. Now I'm very awkward. I, but your grip is far superior. So why don't you add some more versatility to your game? Change your grip for the high ones and add, when the ball is below your knees, get a grip which is almost like your volley grip. Uh, or it's called a continental here and use this grip for low ones. Boy, that's a great idea. Never thought of that, but good idea. Thanks, Dennis. Give it a try. Perfect. Good shot. Okay, and again. Tremendous, Tim. Good power, but not much control. Yeah, you're batting 50-50, you yeah. see. Look, I'm going to give you a trick. Come closer. Let me show you how I suggest you do it. It'll take a bit of practice to do it. See, your tendency is to have this huge wind-up. Why don't you compromise a little bit? Take your racket back, just as, for instance, take the butt of your racket. Instead of, I'm going to take the butt of my racket, it points to my opponent, and from here, I can carry the ball perfectly with my racket where I want the ball to go. Hold it right here. Don't go any further back from it, and just, boom. Just try that a few times. Just take, let me see the butt. Where's the butt? And I'll hold it right there, and I'll just easy stroke, straight forward. That's it. Perfect. And again, and just straight forward. In just a few bit of practice, you'll find your control grows tremendously. And then you can start hitting again with more pace afterwards. Great, Dennis. Thanks very much. Well done. Okay, again. That's good. Tim, let me show you a trick. To get on, on a ball, to get a bit more height on the ball. Try this instead. See, you've been pressing down on your racket. That's a, a lot of world-class pros do that, but it's difficult to control the ball. Here's a little trick. Look, I take my, from my bicep, I swing through, and my chin touch my bicep. Now watch. By doing this, I immediately get the picture of lifting, you see. And it's a very controlled move. The ball comes, and I lift. Try it. Let's just see. Okay. So your chin touches your bicep. And lift. Right, and lift a bit more and lift, right, and again, one more, and straight down the line, and lift, oh, there we go, much see, better. if you touch here, that lifts the ball up and it gives you a bit more control over the stroke. Great, thanks Dennis. Good, look, yeah. you're looking better Tim, yeah, better all the time. It still use a little more control. You know, if you could think a bit more of pushing your palm through the ball. Uh, let me give you an idea how to get the concept. If I would take a, a couple of balls, say three or four balls, I put them in one line like this. Now, you have to think of this as a line, and you want to push your palm right through these row, row, the row of balls here. Okay, go. So from here, there's your palm. Push it right through to the end. Just do it one or two times, let's see, and push it through. See, that will extend the hitting area. Now try a couple with the ball and push through. Yes, and again. Perfect, and again. And push through. See, now the ball goes in a far more predictable line. Yeah, it really does. Feels good. Think about it. You may lose a bit of speed, but the control makes up for it, and as more confidence grows, you can whack the ball harder again. Great. Thanks, Dennis. You get to the last minute. It felt awkward. awkward. It didn't feel right. See, what happens is, we always tell people, get your racket back early. But uh, when you have to run for the ball, look, it's, can you imagine running like this after a bus? You'll never catch it. You, you run like this. So when you, when you run to the ball, the first few steps, churn like, and pump like an athlete. When you get close to the ball, then set your racket. You'll get there a lot quicker. Just stand over there, and now this time, churn your arms and run. Churn. Set your racket. Right. Oh, yeah. See that? You're a lot quicker then, but don't be churning when you get there. Stop just before the ball bounces, and you've got a proper alignment on the ball. Great idea. Thanks, Dennis. Dennis, should I always be standing still at the moment I'm actually striking the ball? No, Tim, look, uh, ideally, if you are moving, you can stop and play the ball. That's known as static balance. But if you watch people play, you see a lot of movement during the hit. That's dynamic balance. So, look, here's a static balance. I run the ball, 
So, and now I get there and now I stop. That'll be one kind of a stroke. Now another one, look, I'll be running through the ball. Watch this time. And I'll... You see, I was moving. That's dynamic balance. Now there's a third way to play, and that is the stumble shot. That's when I, I tried to be static, and, and, and then I stumble, you see. Now you can use either of the first two, but not the third one. Show me the first one, static. Run the ball and stop. Run, now stop, and hit the ball. Very good. Okay, now this time, just run right through the ball. Keep running, keep running through the ball. That's it. You see, both strokes, the second one is a dynamic stroke, and the first one is static, and they use them for different results you want to obtain, coming to the net on the second one, but both are very effective. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Dennis. But don't do the stumble one. I won't. Dennis, I'm trying to teach my wife and kids how to play tennis. Over and over and over, I say, watch the ball, watch the ball, watch the ball. But they uh, don't seem to listen. What, what do I do? Yeah, but, you know, uh, it's, it's not valuable advice. Watch the ball is, to you may not mean something, but it, look, look at this. Here comes the ball. Okay, uh, hubby, I'll watch the ball. Okay, daddy, I'll watch the ball. I see the ball. It went by, yeah, rare, round ball. I see it, ball. I see the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it, it went by me. You see, watching the ball is has no validity to them because it, you're not giving the function. If you say, look, put the racket and ball together. Here comes the ball. Put the racket and ball together. Put them together. Adjust your feet to put them together. Watch the ball hit your racket. Watch the ball meet your racket. If you give it in that term, you see, then it makes meaningful advice to them. But just watch the ball means nothing. I, I, I owe my entire family a big apology. Okay, play a point at me, Seaton. All right, you see, the problem is you admire your shot. <laughs> now, it's a very common tendency to, to want to, to hit the ball and look at the flight of your ball. Look, while the ball's in the air, why not do something? I don't care where you go. While the ball is going, run forward, run backwards, scurry, run, do anything, but be in motion and you'll be much better off for it. Just try it. Just try it. Go anywhere you like. I don't care where you go. Hit the ball. Now go somewhere. Just go somewhere. That's it. Yes, yes. You see, right away you're much more dynamic. Always move while your ball's in the air. That's a good tip. Thanks, Dennis. All right, turn. Let's rally a little bit. See how you control the ball. a bad rally here. I just don't know what I'm doing. No, you know, you, you, you keep the ball going pretty well. What happens is you suddenly want to rush the ball a bit. Look, particularly in the early stages of the match, don't try to win the point too quickly. Get a rhythm first. Now, the best way to get a rhythm, when your partner hits the ball, or your, but rather your opponent hits the ball, when you hit the ball, be in tune with it. And the way you get in tune is count. Not too loudly, but say the word one when you hit the ball, two when your opponent hits the ball, three and four and see if you can make 10 shots, and I'll tell you in a minute why it's so valuable. Okay, go. As you hit the ball, say one, okay? Say one. One. Now, on, in tune. Two. In tune. Three. Okay, good. Four. Say four. Five. Okay. Say six. Good. Seven. Good. Eight. Good. Nine. Good. Ten. Okay. All right, Eleven. stop. See, what happens when you do that is you can't freeze because the very fact of saying one means you're breathing out. Two, three. And this keeps you in rhythm with the thing and gets you from getting tight. Do it in the early parts of a game and you'll find your game will be a lot smoother. Gets you into a kind of a rhythm. Too, that's right, that's it? right. Yeah. You become a good rallier then, okay? Great, thanks Dennis. Very good. And on. All right. Okay, you... It's okay, Dennis, but how do I get to that second shot a little quicker? I still feel a little slow. Yeah, the guys, and I know it's run you all over the course. Yeah. Look, here's a, a tip. You know, while we've been messing with your game, you actually have found a way to recover much more quickly. Look, because now, instead of you playing the ball like this, you're now playing a lot more across your body. Now, look, if you are like this and you hit the ball from your right foot and as you follow through the weight is on your left foot, you're already in a ready position to run. Just try it without the ball a few okay. times. Run over there without the ball, stroke the ball, and as, that's it. Try another one. And as you follow through, follow through, and that's it. And now try it with the ball. Hit the ball, 
and now fall and go. That, very good. You see, yeah, it, if you do that, you're on the way. That's a lot quicker, boy, good idea. It fits in perfectly with the new forehand you've got. Great, thanks Dennis. All right, Tim, and again. Lovely shot, Tim. The only thing is, it's, it's so unpredictable. Yeah. See, what happens is this. Um, you are playing with a high-speed racket. Right. In the old days, people played like this. The, you see, what we had, they had was, the racket was much heavier. So what we had to do is, we used momentum, we used momentum, and we do a backswing, and we had a constant speed of the swing. Now, with modern rackets, they're so light. What you, you don't want to come from way back there and then accelerate towards the ball. What you want to do is get much closer to the ball. Look how Agassi plays. Agassi gets his racket here, and as the ball, he comes slowly, slowly to him, and when he gets closer to the ball, that's when he accelerates. The racket moves slowly, slowly towards the ball, and at the point of contact, then he starts to accelerate. Look, it was the same if I asked you to do this. Here's my racket sitting on my, um, on my hand like this. If I said, you hold your finger like this, and I'll knock it off. Ah, do you see what that? You came real close to it, and that's when you yeah. put the power into it. You didn't start from there. You know you missed yeah, the thing. Think, think of the same thing with the ball now. Take your backswing and go close, slowly to the ball, and then accelerate through the ball. Try that. And now, yes, and again. And now accelerate through the ball. Beautiful shot. Slowly to it, slowly, and then accelerate. Lovely shot. One more time. Slowly, and then accelerate through it. Beautiful shot. And that's the key, you see. Get close to the ball and then give the speed to it. It's going to be a lot more consistent for you. Oh boy, thanks Dennis. You'll be able to use these new rackets very effectively. Yeah.